Hello everyone and welcome back sa bahay ni Teacher Rocky! Yeah, hey! Ito na naman tayo at syempre pa, ito ay bilang pagpapatuloy ng ating RPMS Serie 2023. Kumusta naman po kayong lahat? Kumusta naman po ang ating Objective 1? Na Naka-accomplish na ba tayo? Kasi we should be ready by now for Objective number 2. Ayan. Nagpakulot pa talaga si Teacher Sana Rocky para sa video na to. Bagay ba? Pa-comment naman dyan ng ating reaction sa ating pakulot. Pagka marami kong reaction na bagay, magpapakulot na ako ng pang-permanent. <laughs> anyway, syempre, katulad yung nakagawian natin. Umpisaan natin ang ating video sa pamamagitan ng ating pa-shoutout. Medyo madami to bibilisan natin. Okay? Umpisahan natin kay Sir John Ray Montinola. Parang natatanda mo to Sir John Ray from uh, last uh, RPMS serye natin last school year. Sabi niya, thank you Teacher Rocky, you're welcome po. And syempre kay Mami Femia Dolores na hindi nag-a-absent. Thank you for explaining Objective 1. Looking forward for the next. Ito na nga po yun. And then from Mom Christina Torla, thank you Teacher Rocky for sharing ideas in Objective Number One. You're welcome, po. And of course, kay Mom Nance Tugnaw, thanks Teacher Rocky, always for your always waiting for your new video. Alam ko po na ako napakasi pagmanood nito ni Mom Nance Tugnaw. And we also have from Mom Rian Pearl Abeliana. Ayan. Hello Teacher Rocky, thank you. Thank you for your videos po. Watching from Panabo City. Ayan, shout out ko yung mga taga Panabo City. Specifically, ang mga taga Panabo City Senior High School Als Dep Ed. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagpanood ng ating video. Sana po ma-enjoy ma nyo at matu matu may matutunan kayo. Ayan. And we also have here from Girl15. Wow, napaka-sweet ng pangalan ni Ma'am. Thank you po, Teacher Rocky. You're welcome. From Sir James Garcia. Thanks a lot po, Teacher Rocky. And from Ma'am Marisa Divino. Teacher Rocky, just want, you, just want to know how I am blessed. Just, I just want you to know how I am blessed na naipapaliwanag ko sa aking co-teachers ang RPMS from your videos. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, nakaka-flutter po yun. Thank you so much po. And of course, we have here from Ma'am Bernadette Irma Caballa. Wow, ang galing po. Thank you so much po for sharing. You're welcome po. From Ma'am Chris Pearl, Washington. Hi! Sa wakas. Nag-start na po kayo, Teacher Rocky. God bless po. Parang inip na inip na to si Ma'am Chris Pearl sa ating ano, RPMS serie. <laughs> Charot. Excited na siya. Anyway, we have another one from Ma'am Maril Duazo. Nagiging suki na natin to si Ma'am Mar uh, Mar Maril. Thank you po for sharing. You're welcome po. Another one from Ma'am Bernadette Irma Caballa. Thank you po. You're welcome, Ma'am. Ma'am Suki, you're welcome. And we have here from Rachel Elomina. Ma'am, lumabas na po IQA nyo? Patapunta sa RPM is ang ating question. Anyway, thank you for your comment. And from Ma'am Febeline Taborada, Thanks, ma'am. Balikan ko lang si Ma'am Rachel Elomina. Magpo-post po ako ng different video para po sa update ng IQA. Ano po? Okay, next. From Ma'am Joyce Perlanga. Hello, Ma'am Joyce. This is a very good friend po uh, from Kisaw, pero sa Morong po siya. Banggaling, pa-shoutout next serie. Miss you. Miss you na din po, ma'am. Hello po sa inyong lahat at sa lahat ng mga teachers sa inyong school. From Ma'am Christina Torla, good morning Teacher Rocky, good morning Ma'am, hello. And we have here from Ma'am Myra, wait lang, hindi ko mabasa. Ayan, from Ma'am Myra Manogid, pa shoutout naman po Teacher Rocky, Myra Toledana Manogid of Bugao National High School, SDO Katanduanes. Wow, ang layo ni ma'am. Hello po sa inyo lahat, lahat po ng mga teachers sa Bugao National High School, SDO Katanduanes, lalong-lalo na kay Ma'am Mayra Toledana Manogid. Hello po, happy watching. 
And another is okay po natin from Ma'am Grace Irene Rebuyas. Morning Teacher Rocky. Good morning po. Good afternoon. Good day po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat po for watching. And that's it for our pa shout out for this video. So, that means that we are ready now to proceed to our new video tutorial. Katulad ng nakikita nyo sa ating title, we are on to objective number 2 of the RPMS Serie 2023. So our topic for today is about objective number 2 of the RPMS tool for proficient teachers for school year 2022 to 2023, which says, use a range of teaching strategies that enhance learner achievement in literacy and numeracy skills. Puntahan po natin ang ating RPMS tool. Objective number two is to still under content knowledge and pedagogy. So the objective wants us to be able to use. Gumamit daw po tayo ng iba't ibang teaching strategies that will enhance learner achievement sa literacy and numeracy skills. Paano po natin ito maipapakita? This can be shown to our classroom observation. Dito po tayo i-rate whether or not we were able to meet this objective. So dahil this is a classroom uh, observable indicator, we will be rated according to the quality and efficiency of our uh, means of verification or our attachment. So, katulad pa rin ng objective 1, the quality will be rated, we will get 5 points if we get level 7 from the COT rating sheet or inter-observer agreement form, depende po kung ilan ang nag-observe sa ating classroom observation. 4 points naman if we were given level 6, 3 points if we were given level 5, and 2 points if we were given level 4, and 1 point if we were given level 3 or lower o kaya naman po ay hindi tayo nakapag classroom observation. Under the efficiency, tatlong score lang ang pwede nating makuha. We'll get 5 points if we were able to meet the objective within the allotted time. 3 points naman if we were able to meet the objective but we exceeded the allotted time. And 1 point kung wala tayong naipakitang evidences or ibig sabihin di tayo nakapag-classroom observation. Okay? So, balikan lang uli natin ang ating guidelines for classroom observation. Ulitin ko lang na for this uh, school year, we are only required to perform two classroom observations and that will be conducted in the last two quarters. So, isa para sa third quarter and another one for the fourth quarter. So, the figure 5 will provide us the schedule and distribution of the identified classroom observable indicators. So, for uh, classroom observable indicator number 2, which is our objective number 2, this will be rated both on the third and fourth quarter classroom observation. So, dalawa po ang kailangan natin. Uh, rating from the third quarter classroom observation and another one from the fourth quarter classroom observation. Okay? So, this is the example of our rating sheet. Depende po kung ilan ang nag-observe sa atin. Pag more than one, then we will have to use the inter-observer agreement form instead. Kung isa lang po, rating sheet lang ang gagamitin nating attachment para sa ating RPMS portfolio. With this, we would like to... Uh, emphasize on a uh, classroom observable indicator number two, and that is use a range of teaching strategies that enhance learner achievement in literacy and numeracy skills. Kailangan daw makagamit tayo ng iba't ibang strategies na makapag-enhance ng achievement ng ating mga estudyante in literacy and numeracy skills. And with that, we will still assume and we will still aim for the highest possible score. Ang tanong po, paano ba tayo makakakuha ng highest possible score? Then we will have to understand our objective. Intindihin po natin mabuti ang hinihingi sa ating objective. 
So ang objective po natin is use a range of teaching strategies that enhance learner achievement in literacy and numeracy, numeracy skills. Paano po natin ito maisasagawa? Meron po tayong guide. Gagamitin po natin ang PPST 1.4.2. Katulad ng sinabi sa notes sa baba, PPST Resource Package Module 2 offers illustrative and instructive information that can help ratees achieve this objective. So, puntahan po natin ang PPST Module number 2. Ito po ang gagamitin. So, ang PPST Resource Package o ang uh, Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers Resource Package Module 2 ang gagamitin po nating basihan para po masigurado that we will get the highest possible score for objective number 2 which is uh, use a range of teaching strategies that enhance learner achievement in literacy and numeracy skills. And a reminder po, we are on to module number 2. So, puntahan natin ang Module 2 ng PPST Resource Package. So, ito yung Resource Package, Module 2. So, uh, we'll proceed to the explanation of uh, Number 2 Module. Ang ating... Uh, ang ating... Objective pa rin is use a range of... Uh, Teaching strategies, kailang gumamit daw po tayo ng iba't ibang pamamaraan ng pagtuturo para ma-enhance ang ating learner, ang achievement ng ating learner in literacy and numeracy skills. Kailang makita po ito during our classroom observation. Okay? So, uh, let us look at the illustration here. As teachers, central to our role is to build a strong foundation in literacy and numeracy among learners and strengthen their ability to engage in education, reach their potential, and participate fully in the community. Literacy and numeracy skills are crucial for us accessing the broader curriculum as they are used in many aspects of our lives. Obtaining an acceptable level of literacy and numeracy can greatly enhance learners' achievement because they are used in many aspects of their lives. Workplace numeracy, literacy, and employability skills are often used in conjunction with one another. These required skills often overlap and are necessary for any task. So in this module, you uh, it will be introduced to us the range of teaching strategies. Ipapakita sa atin yung iba't one teaching strategies that promote literacy and numeracy and how becoming literate and numerate expand the learner's opportunities to access wider understanding. Okay, first of all, let us understand that different key concepts for this objective. So we have literacy. It refers to the capability one acquires in order to read, understand, and construct textual material. This ability is useful in regular academic and non-academic situations and contexts within the school community and in different occupational areas. Literacy is not confined to merely learning to read and write. It also encompasses a range of more complex skills including the ability to apprehend ideas and concepts. So, yun po yung literacy. What about numeracy? This refers to the ability to understand and use mathematical knowledge for calculating, problem solving, and interpreting information in order to arrive at educated and well-informed decisions. Numeracy is an important skill for learners to master to help them prepare for life beyond the school and within the workplace and greater community. So we're getting our students ready po for their future by uh, giving them the ability to gain skills in literacy and numeracy. Now, what about teaching strategies? These refer to techniques, practices, approaches, and systems teachers employ in their classroom practice to advance student learning. Okay, ito yung pamamaraan ng pagtuturo natin. Then, the learner achievement. This refers to the realization by a learner of academic material or content knowledge within a given period. Within a given period, teachers have a certain amount of academic material they need to teach and learners need to learn. 
Learner achievement increases when teachers provide quality teaching aligned with set standards. Okay, so those are the key concepts. Let us proceed to uh, this one. As soon as a child is born, he or she begins to read the world to make sense of what he or she sees, hears, and does over time. Parents, siblings, and the wider family help the child become involved in the community and culture and learn different ways of communicating. This is the starting point of the development of literacy skills. A strong foundation in literacy takes time to build. And writing. Many young pupils may lack exposure to preschool education and a culture of reading and storytelling at home. Therefore, the role of the elementary school teacher is crucial in making sure possible gaps in the development of literacy skills are compensated for during the first years of schooling. Indeed, elementary school teachers have a huge role to play in ensuring that children develop a strong foundation in literacy skills. Then the responsibility for literacy must not just lie with the language teachers, who admittedly are at the center of the task, but with teachers of all subjects who have the responsibility of supporting children in developing their literacy skills. So this is not just the responsibility of the language teachers or the English teachers. Lahat po tayo bilang guro ay responsible po para sa literacy and numeracy, numeracy skills ng ating mga estudyante. Developing literacy skills not only supports learning but also enhances understanding within the curriculum area and is a key way of raising standards and outcomes in all subjects, okay? So let us proceed here. This is an important note. Fellow teacher, literacy is not just about learning to read and write. Napaka importante po na uh, Isaisip natin ito. It is not just about learning to read and write. It is necessary in order to learn any subject at school. Similarly, numeracy is more than counting numbers. Both skills are at an interplay in the holistic performance of our learners. As teachers of literacy and numeracy across the curriculum, we should provide our learners a range of different contexts in which they can use these skills. We all have the responsibility to promote these skills in our classroom. In all levels and curriculum areas, we should explore the possibilities of extending and complementing numeracy and literacy. We should give our children quality instruction so that they can have the best chances to succeed in life. So to deepen our understanding of our roles as literacy and numeracy teachers, regardless of our grade level and learning area, we have provided several illustrations here. Okay. So uh, this module will now walk you through the different illustrations or practice that provide multiple opportunities for learners to gain these fundamental skills across curriculum areas. Together, let us explore some ways on how a teacher can weave literacy and numeracy instruction into the content they teach. So, katulad po ng sinabi kanina, ang numeracy and literacy skills po ng mga estudyante does not depend only on English or mathematics teacher. Lahat po tayo bilang guro ay responsable po sa numeracy and literacy skills po ng ating mga estudyante kahit ano pa pong subject or learning area ang hinahandle natin. Okay? So, we have to make sure that we provide them with a wide opportunity of gaining numeracy and literacy skills in our, uh, in the learning area that we are teaching. So, we have here different illustration of practice. So, we have uh, literacy across curriculum areas. So, paano ba uh, madedevelop ang literacy ng mga bata sa iba't ibang curriculum areas? So, we have principle one, literacy instruction is embedded in all learning areas. Ayan. If you are a math, history, science, or art teacher, 
Where does literacy fit in your classroom instruction? Yan po ang tanong nating lahat, di ba? Paano ko naman ipapasok sa aking uh, okay. sa aking klase? Ang uh, literacy if I am handling mathematics class, di ba? With content standards looming, it's easy to only focus on the content we teach. We have so much to tell learners and share with them. However, are we affording learners enough time daily to practice crucial communication skills? There are an endless number of engaging, effective strategies to get learners to think about, write about, read about, and talk about the content you teach. The ultimate goal of literacy instruction is to build. Ask yourself these questions. How do I mostly convey the information and knowledge to my learners? Do I turn primarily to straight lecture or teacher talk? Do I allow multiple opportunities for learners to discover information on their own? Paano ba tayo nagtuturo? Tayo ba yung klase ng teacher that we do straight lecture, more of teacher talk? O tayo yung klase ng teacher who allow multiple opportunities for learners to discover information on their own? So, let us try to read the strategies employed by Leia, a great chick teacher, as she integrates literacy skills in her lessons. So, Leia teaches grade 6 learners. Knowing the importance of developing literacy skills among her learners, she integrates literacy skills in her TLE class. Ayan, TLE ang klase niya, but uh, si teacher Leia was able to integrate uh, literacy skills sa kanyang klase. On one occasion, she asked them to collect empty food packets. For example, chips, biscuits, juice, milk. Wash them and bring them to school. At school, the learners are instructed to look at the different packets and what is written on them. They learn many new words this way, such as the names of the ingredients. In another activity, Teacher Leia instructs the grade 6 learners to bring one daily newspaper to their Filipino class. Sa Filipino naman to. She tells the learners to select an article that interests them and make notes about it. Then she arranges them in groups of 4 to 6, putting learners who have chosen the same article together so they could hear each other's interpretation of the story and discuss the different ways of describing the same story. So these are just examples of how we can integrate literacy in other subjects. So let us uh, take note of this. Teacher Leia's activities did not require many resources or much extra time, but made the learning of new terms and vocabulary more interesting and relevant to the learners. This would undoubtedly enhance their learning. Oh, diba? Nagamit niya ang literacy skills sa kanyang TLE and Filipino subject and uh, undoubtedly that would enhance the learners are uh, learning. As a teacher, you can explore varied ways to develop your learner's literacy and life skills. In developing your lessons, you just have to consider your learner's level, learning goals, and appropriate teaching resources. For instance, to expose your learners in real setting for language, you may take them to offices, museums, shops, and other places in your community. This can give them exposure in reading and understanding language in authentic use. Likewise, you may integrate ICTs such as computers, mobile, mobile phones, and other ways of utilizing them for information sharing and communication. Pwede mo silang pagdali ng uh, mobile phone and then with internet connection, uh, find uh, articles in uh, Google, something like that. To develop their writing skills, encourage your learners to compose varied text types, advertisements, announcements, letters, stories, factual texts, and so on. So, yun yung mga pwede natin gawin. Now, let us explore the practices employed by teacher Jonaline in her music class, which enhanced the literacy skills of her grade 7 learners. So, si teacher Jonaline naman is a grade 7 teacher who's teaching music. 
So, Jonalyn teaches MAPEF to grade 7 learners. Many of her learners have difficulty in reading music textbooks. So, Jonalyn plans a way of teaching music that makes it easier for them to access the information in the textbook. Teacher Jonalyn plans to teach the class about the different types of instruments. She starts the lesson by showing the learners names of the different instruments, wind, percussion, and string. She writes these on flashcards. These flashcards are displayed on the board. She also gives each learner a picture of an instrument. She asks each learner to come up in front and put the picture next to the flashcard with the name of the instruments to which they think it belongs. Then she asks questions about what they know about the different types of instruments, the characteristics of each type and the difference between and among them. Jonalyn then divides the class into three groups and gives each group the one of the example, make up a song or design a poster to show what they know about the instruments. Or they can draw different instruments under the type of instrument and write about them, which they could make into a book. In the next lesson, Jonalyn asks each group to present their work to the rest of the class. The learners are excited about the activities and some ask if they could do more work on their instruments at home. So this is how uh, teacher Jonalyn integrates literacy to her MAPE class, to her music class. So um, literacy is not just about reading. So uh, being able to uh, let your students get interested in reading, writing, and understanding concepts. Yun yung literacy skills. So, naipakita yun ni Teacher Jonalyn dito sa kanyang uh, music class. And then, let us have Principle 2. Literacy instruction considers the learner's key stage. Okay. So, a grade 2 teacher uses explicit teaching to develop vocabulary knowledge among her learners. Prior to the reading of the story, she first chose key unfamiliar words and introduced this to various modes. For example, pictures, context, context clues. Then she modeled and used each word. She allowed her pupils to use the words through guided and independent practice exercises. Learners are encouraged to use them in meaningful structures. So that's for grade 2 teacher. So she was able to... Uh, introduce literacy instruction and this is considered as the key stage for the learners. Ano po? So, ipinakita niya how to introduce new words to students and then help them use it by uh, guided and independent practice exercises. Another one, a junior high school teacher engages her class to write an argumentative text. She presents a newspaper editorial about bullying. She facilitates a discussion about its text structure and development. Later, she poses another realistic learner issue. Should learners be required to wear a specific haircut? Brainstorming was used to draw their claims. She then guided the learners to organize these claims according to degree of importance. After, she allows them to write independently their editorials. Learners were then encouraged to read their compositions. Okay. So, yung principle one natin was integrating literacy to different, to other um, learning area. Yung principle two naman natin, if we are actually teaching um, literacy subject, English, in English class in particular. So, dito, naipapakita natin, na, maisasagawa natin itong mga activities na to to enhance uh, learners' achievement in literacy. So, have you seen the distinct difference between the, the instruction in those key stages? Literacy instruction for the young learners focused on vocabulary building and making meaning of what they read. This is important to help them develop skills and strategies to access the content of the simple text they are reading. Meanwhile, as they become more proficient readers, the skills of skimming, questioning, and reviewing texts become much more important. 
As a teacher, you will need to plan and adapt activities to match their levels and skills in reading depending on your learner's age and needs. Okay? So, sa grade 2, nag-introduce pa lang tayo ng mga vocabulary words, uh, giving them uh, the meaning, examples, and allowing them to uh, use it in different exercises. Pero habang tumatanda sila, habang na they reach uh, more uh, levels in school, we are trying to introduce them to more, uh, to a higher order thinking skills. Diba? Yun yung sinasabi natin. So, we introduce them to uh, skimming, questioning, and reviewing of what they have just read or what they have just heard. Okay, so we go to principle three. Teaching literacy is strengthened by building links to the real world. Okay, so principle one, na principle one natin is integrating literacy to other learning areas. Uh, principle two is introducing literacy to uh, literacy subjects such as English. For principle three naman, uh, we, are, we will try to teach literacy that would strengthen. How do we strengthen teaching literacy by building links to the real world? This is one example. Teacher Karen is a grade 3 teacher who wanted her pupils to understand how important literacy is to all aspects of life. To do this, she conducted a project that would encourage her pupils to explore literacy at home and in the community. Teacher Karen encourages the young learners in her class to hone their observation skills by asking them to take note of and write down names of streets and stores, outdoor advertisements, and other street signs on their way home from school. So uh, the students are, uh, are asked to observe the, uh, their environment, the community as they go home from school. This noticing assignment is reviewed during the next class meeting when learners share the words they saw. Teacher Karen writes on the board the words that the learners put together in their list. From this list, teacher Karen can ask learners to use the words in a sentence or a paragraph. She can also encourage the learners to use their activity, their creativity to come up with a story based on the words they collected. Diba? So, na link nakapag-build si teacher Karen ng link of teaching literacy to the real world, to the outside world. Now, let's go to illustration of practice number two. Numeracy across curriculum areas. So, yung illustration of practice number one natin is literacy across curriculum areas. This one man is numeracy across curriculum areas. According to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency in 2013, numeracy is not perceived as easy to teach by most teachers, and many may feel that they need more support to teach numeracy than literacy, perhaps because they themselves did not like math at school. However, to develop numeracy across the curriculum provides opportunities for children to improve their accuracy and learn how to interpret information. Learning how to present information in a quantitative way and developing children's problem-solving and thinking skills go beyond the mathematics lessons. Making learning numer numeracy across the curriculum a success needs the support of all teachers if it is to be effective and have an impact on children learning. So it doesn't, it's not just the responsibility of the math teachers, but it is our uh, responsibility being a teacher. Lahat po tayo responsible for this. So we'll proceed to the principle one of uh, principle one of illustration of practice number two. Numeracy should be developed consistently across different areas of learning. So katulad ng literacy, kailangan ding integrate ang numeracy in all in diff across different areas of learning. A social studies teacher wanted to deepen the understanding of his grade 4 learners to compare the local agricultural products in their community. As part of the extended classroom activity, he asked his learners to conduct data gathering among the locals on the amount of agricultural products harvested for a week. The next day, he facilitated, facilitated the learners' discussion that included these numeracy concepts. 
which agricultural product got the highest produce, which was least produced, which area harvested the most. After, he engaged more his learners by asking them to conduct investigatory projects focusing on key concepts such as what could be attributed to the differences in the harvest, what possible solutions could you give so that produce will increase. So that is integrating numeracy sa social studies, di ba? So uh, kahit ano pang subject ang tinuturo natin, we are responsible in developing numeracy amongst our students. All teachers have a responsibility for promoting numeracy subjects. In the sample teacher practice, the social studies teacher demonstrates knowledge of the key areas of numeracy that makes her explore within the subject the opportunities for extending and complementing numeracy teaching and learning in mathematics lessons. So that was a great job. So that only means that uh, literacy and numeracy should be integrated in different subjects. Ano po? So, kahit ano pang subject na itinuturo natin, kailangang maipakita natin during our classroom observation. Not just during our classroom observation, but during our regular class. So, binigyan tayo ng mga example strategies, example activities, kung paano natin may integrate ang numeracy sa ibang subject. For example, sa history. Teacher Marites includes concept of time, concept of number and dates, sequencing events and dates, understanding and comparing large numbers, using a timeline, logical reasoning. She includes activities such as sequencing numbers and dates to help learners see why some events, such as the start of a war, happened. O, di ba? Na-integrate na yung numeracy sa history. Sa so, science, Teacher Melody includes making measurements, collecting data, comparing and interpreting data, graphs and diagrams, estimation, logical reasoning. In her grade 8 science class, she asked learners to measure the extension of a spring with different weights that will involve them in various measuring tasks and devising ways of recording their results. Okay, so sa science yan. Sa English naman, paano natin i-integrate ang numeracy skill? Teacher Lalene includes reading and writing numbers, time and measurement concept in English in her grade 4 English class. Okay? Vocational education and training, the TVL. Teacher Ronnie includes making measurements, distance, area, volume, timing, geometry, that's shapes, and estimation in his senior high school tile setting class. So, marami tayong pwedeng paggamitan ng mga ng, uh, measurements pagdating sa TLE classes. He asked learners to estimate how much of each material they will need to tile a floor and work out the actual cost to help them see how to judge the possibility of being able to afford to do the job. Sa physical education naman, Teacher Joe includes number, concept, measurements, and practical activities of measuring distance. In her physical education class, she asks her learners to measure heartbeat, pulse rates, and recovery rates to judge their fitness. So that's uh, uh, integrating numeracy po sa so PE. The arts, teacher Imelda includes geometry, that shapes, perspective in her grade 8 arts class. She knows that understanding how shapes tessellate will help her learners design their own patterns in traditional styles. So you see, marami pong paraan para i-integrate natin ang numeracy kahit anong subject pa ang tinuturo natin. Okay? So let us proceed to principle 2. Numeracy skills are built through meaningful and fun-filled activities. So paano naman to magiging meaningful and fun-filled? Teacher Andrew, a grade 6 TLE teacher, Ask his learners to record daily in a table their spending for their allowance. Ayan, TLE teacher to. So, uh, pinaggawa niya ng table ng kanyang mga estudyante wherein they have to uh, track down their daily allowance, their expenses, and how much was left. So, that's numeracy. After he engaged the class to compare their allowance and their spending, he also asked them to present the data in a bar graph. He asked them to interpret their findings. He then involved them to devise an individual financial plan. 
Okay. So there's also, now let us take a look at this teacher practice that's utilizing games. Let's take a look at how the teacher employed these strategies. Ito naman, gumawa naman ng game. So Simon says, geometry. So number one uh, instruction, choose someone to be Simon. Have Simon give a command to the other players. That's A, point, fist, segment, arm bent at elbow across chest, ray, arm straight across, line, both arms extended, right arm to the right side, left arm to the left side. Perpendicular, one arm up, one to the side. Parallel, both arms up. If the command starts with Simon says, the players have to do it. If the command doesn't start with Simon says, and the player does it, they're out. The last person standing wins. So, gagawin lang, uh, gag uh, mag magsasalita lang si Simon ng either point, segment, ray, line, perpendicular, or parallel. Tapos, imamuestra ng estudyante the uh, appropriate uh, arm uh, arm uh, and uh, you need to require na movement. Pagka nag-start si Simon says ng uh, pag nag-start si Simon ng Simon says, it is the teacher was able to employ fun way of learning mathematics, di ba? Uh, masaya, nasiyahan ng mga bata at the same time, natuto. Another example of a game is Johnny Walks the Number Line. So, ito naman, this is about number lines. You will work in groups of five, choose who will be Johnny in the group, you will draw an equation from the fishbowl, read the equation and be able to answer it. The groupmates will walk Johnny to the answer on the number line. Okay, so uh, for example, 2 plus 2, starting at 0, the groupmates walk Johnny to 2, then he walks 2 more. Okay, so that's how uh, you can engage your learners into a fun learning of numeracy. To strengthen numeracy, you should create a rich and supportive learning environment that will support a skillful mix of a variety of approaches. Kasi nga, madalas ang uh, numeracy or mathematics, uh, hindi masyadong nakakahiligan ng maraming bata. Uh, for some reason, ma mahirap or uh, uh, com complicated. So, kailangan makapag-isip tayo ng pamamaraan kung paano magiging interested ng ating mga learners with numeracy. So, this includes active learning and planned purposeful play. So, gawin natin sa isang uh, uh, planned uh, learning and play. Diba? Para masiyan sila, ma makuha natin yung interest nila. Development of problem problem solving capabilities. Developing mental agility. Frequently asking children to explain their thinking. Use of relevant context and experiences familiar to children and the young people. Using technology in appropriate and effective ways. Building on the principles of assessment is for learning, including understanding the purpose and relevance of these activities. Both collaborative and independent learning. Making frequent links across the curriculum so that concepts and skills are developed further by being applied in different relevant contexts. And promoting an interest and enthusiasm for numeracy, which is very important. Next one, illustration of practice number three, numeracy and literacy in classroom instruction. So, as so illustration of practice one natin, literacy, illustration of practice two, numeracy, the illustration of practice naman, we're combining numeracy and literacy in classroom instruction. So, the literacy goal, I should enable my learners to note details in a story character setting events. Ang numeracy goal, I should enable uh, my learners to Read and write numbers up to 1,000 in symbols and in words. So, yun yung goal niya. Miss Kathleen, a grade 2 teacher, has developed a holistic perspective in planning her instruction. She considers literacy and numeracy skills as interconnected skills and equally important in every instruction. She crafts her instruction to develop these skills. In one of her daily teachings, she utilized a story about a family. 
Using these as a springboard, she engaged the class to discuss the story details, the characters, settings, and events. In her math session, she utilized the same story but instead of story elements, as the focus, she directed the learner's attention on number sense by asking her pupils to read and write the number that represent the members of their family. As an extended activity, she told her pupils to report about their families, including the number and names of the members. Okay? So she was able to uh, integrate literacy and uh, both literacy and numeracy uh, in her class. Okay. That's it for our uh, PPST resource package module 2. So, in general, ang pinaka-importante dito uh, to be able for us to achieve the objective in classroom observation, dapat makapagpakita tayo ng activity sa ating, uh, during our classroom observation that we are promoting numeracy and literacy skills sa ating mga estudyante. Nakita naman natin sa module kung ano-ano yung mga example na pwede nating gawin at gamitin para maipakita sa ating, uh, during the classroom observation, that we used a uh, range uh, of teaching strategies. So, during our classroom observation, kailangang maipakita natin na tayo ay gumamit ng iba't ibang strategies para ma-enhance ang learner achievement in literacy, in both literacy and numeracy skills. Kahit ano pang subject ang itinuturo natin. So, maglaan tayo ng activities kung saan mapapakita natin that we are trying to develop the literacy and numeracy skills ng ating mga estudyante. Maraming binigay na example sa ating uh, resource package, PPST resource package. Pwede natin gamitin yun or we can develop our own based on those examples, di ba? Uh, depende sa grade level na tinuturuan natin at syempre sa kanilang uh, depende sa subject na tinuturo natin but no matter what the subject uh, that we're handling kailangan may pakita natin that we are uh, responsible in developing the literacy and numeracy skills ng ating mga estudyante at pag napakita na natin yon then we will be able to achieve or get the highest possible score in uh, objective number two, which is also our classroom observable indicator number two. So, ang highest possible score is seven. So, for example, that this is our, uh, this is my rating sheet. So, uh, we should be able to get the highest possible score. And, wag kalimutan yung note sa baba. Not the teacher was able to uh, meet the objective within the uh, allotted time. Para dun sa ating score sa efficiency. With that, Kukumpute natin yung IPCRF rating computation. So, we'll get 7 from COT rating sheet and 7 from uh, rating sheet 2, which are uh, both uh, equal to RPMS 5-point scale rating of 5 and then an average of 5. Then, we'll get outstanding for our RPMS. Okay? For the efficiency, kailangan makakuha tayo ng 5. Kailangan mamit natin yung objective within the allotted time para makakuha tayo ng highest possible score, which is 5, to get an outstanding score. So, having this IPCRF rating computation, we are now ready to transfer our evidences dun sa ating RPMS portfolio. So, let's go to our RPMS portfolio. Okay. So, natapos na natin yung ating objective 1 before. And now, we're moving on to objective number 2. Ayan, nailagay na natin ang ating uh, COT rating sheet for third quarter and fourth quarter. And we were able to put annotation as well, which is uh, for objective 2, which is a classroom observable indicator. I got a rating of 7 for both third and fourth quarter classroom observation, which is equivalent to 5 points in the IPCRF rating under quality. Having a note from my observer that I have met the objective between the allotted time, within the allotted time, Gives me a score of 5 points under the efficiency. Okay, okay na tayo sa ating RPMS. Dali na natin ang computation sa ating IPCRF. So, this is objective number 2. For COT uh, 1, third quarter, we got 7 points, di ba? And then, for our uh, COT 2, 7 points then. 
So, kung mapapansin nyo, nag-compute ng automatic ang ating quality, which is equivalent to 5 points. Ilalagay naman natin yung score natin sa ating efficiency. And that will give us a computation of average of 5 and the score of 0.350. Kung mapapansin nyo, automatic yan mag-update sa ating uh, part 1 ng ating IPCRF. So, ayan na yung score natin kasi naka-formula uh, na yan. And for objective number 2 as well. Now, it will also be updated sa ating summary sheet. Ayan, may score na tayo. May score na ang objective 1 and 2. Don't mind the others, yung mga yan, kasi mapapalitan niya ng score as soon as we put in our score. Okay, so that's it. We were able to accomplish objective number 2 for this video. At ayan na nga po ang kabuuan ng ating video for today. Sana po ay naunawaan nyo, mas naunawaan nyo, uh, kung papaano makakuha ng highest possible score para sa Objective 2, which is another Classroom Observable Indicator. And this is Classroom Observable Indicator number 2. Sana po ay mas napadali ang pag-accomplish nyo ng objective na to. And I am looking forward uh, sa inyong uh, highest possible score sa ating lahat. Ano po? Yan po kasi ang ating aim. Kaya po tayo nagagawa ng video tutorial na to eh para maintindihan natin na madali lang naman kumuha o maka-achieve ng highest possible score so that ang ating goal syempre is always an outstanding IPCRF. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button po pasuporta po sa ating video para mas ganahan pa tayo. Mas maraming like, mas ginaganahan si Teacher Rocky na maggawa pa ng mas marami pang video tutorial. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already sa mga bago po sa ating channel. Don't forget to subscribe po and hit that notification bell to bell all. Mas maganda po kung bell all. Yung bell na may ganun na guhit. Para po, every time na mag update ako or mag-upload ako ng bagong video, mauuna po kayong inotify ni YouTube. At hindi kayo malalagpasan ng ating RPMS Serie 2023. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you always and keep safe.